Hello, today we're looking at what's in this little bag from Vifly, but just before we get into that equipment, mind you please like or dislike this video if you didn't like it, comment down below, don't forget to subscribe, and if you can find that little bell icon, click on it, it'll tell you what I'm uploading stuff. What is this? In this bag is something called the Vifly Short Saver. What is a short saver? Essentially, it's something that you should use the first time you plug something in, and it will detect if you've got a short and shut off voltage to it. How's this work? Well, if we get it out of the bag, and firstly I should say what you get in here is the short stopper itself, so it's got um, connections for XT60 and XT30, and you plug the battery in one end and then you plug it in the cord the other way, and it's got this little manual here about what to do. Now, the idea is that when you've got a short or some sort of miswiring configuration, what will happen is it will draw uh, an exponential amount of power, and this will usually result in that uh, component going up in smoke, hence the magic smoke. So what it will do is detect if the current flow is more than one amp or two amps. There's actually a switch there so you can check it. And if it is, it will shut it off. And the idea being that if you plug this into quad the first time, you, you really shouldn't get any particular amount of amps through. You'd sort of get milliamps because it's just ticking over. If it suddenly goes, oh, I want all the power, then it's like I'm shutting this down before it manages to explode anything. So. I'm going to test this to see if I can miswire something and stop it exploding. And then, if I can work out how to do it without setting my house on fire, I'm going to plug it in when it is miswired without this and see what happens. So join me for that in a second. So you'll notice today my normal background has this mount of it. Just in case I set fire to stuff, and you see I've burnt stuff already because I used to solder on this. So how to show this in operation? I thought I might try plugging it into stuff and see what happens. The first thing you should do before plugging this in is actually plug the battery to this in first and you'll see you've got some status LEDs. Green light is you're ready to go. If you're on the 2 amp setting the blue LED will light up and the normal setting is 1 amp and that should be enough. So we can test this out very quickly by taking this quad here and basically we'd expect to be able to hook this up and the green light should stay there because we shouldn't. it shouldn't draw 1 amp of power or above just plugging it in. So let's try that. All looks good. We've got the green light on. That means we don't have a short. We don't have any misconfiguration. It's pretty much what I expected because this quad works fine. Let's try this guy. This is uh, my old motor off my Bixler. Here's a 25 amp ESC and here's just a servo tester to act as my throttle. So if we plug this in, we got a little bleep 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 from the motor. And if we try powering up that motor, oh look at that. We got the power has said you've just gone past one amp I'm going to stop you and I've measured this with an amp meter and yeah the the initial little burst does take it over one amp even though the when it's actually running it's less so but what we can do just to demonstrate that is if we flick this back over the two amps power that up plug that in and try powering up now that's good. Although certainly for plugging stuff in first time, the one amp's gonna be the recommendation there. So this is what I'm calling my sacrificial setup. I'm back on the normal one amp setting. This has gone green again. And what I've got here is I've got this um, old Hobby King ESC, which is horribly noisy, uh, a motor and a normal XC60. And again, that little servo tester to uh, try it out. Let's just plug this in. Okay, that's plugged in and this will generally start the motor up okay, even at one amp. So what I'm proposing to do is I'm going to reverse the polarity. You see I've just got these hooked up normally and we've got red wire to red wire. If I reverse the polarity, this should get a horrendous short circuit and in normal cases this would burn up and die. So let's try doing that and see what happens when we plug in. Now weirdly, having just come to the point to edit this, I found out I'm missing some footage. Uh, and this is basically what it's like when you're starting and stopping the camera, sometimes you get out of sync and you're stopping the camera, doing some stuff and then starting it and not doing stuff. You, you've come, come out of sync. What happened was I tested it on the one amp setting. I plugged in with the, the miswiring. I plugged in there and it went red and stopped it. And then I re-plugged it in after rewiring it and everything was fine. Now. I'm going to show you this on the 2 amp setting because I did that next, but this leads me to another thing anyway. What I did with this, because it was kind of interesting, is 
I've set up this simple thing with just like an ESC and a motor. The reason I can't just go back and refilm it will become obvious. But when I was using with just like an ESC and a motor, uh, sometimes that setup I had would go red instantly. And it seems like when there's a connection, there's just this little bit of a spike. And other times, as you saw on that Bixler motor, when we just start touching that, um, that motor, there's another bit of a spike and it jumps over one amp. So I went over and um, you guys, that, that saw the intro would be aware of stuff hanging on my wall. And I plugged all the quads in I had on one amp and they were all fine. And then I plugged all the planes in I had on one amp and they all went red straight away. It seems that when you've got this like direct ESC connection, perhaps with a back as well, there's this little bit of a, like a pulse of over one amp. So one thing is it, it seems quite valid to test it with the two amp, which is the bit that's coming up. And also, um, depending on the config you have, um, it might be the fact that you plug it in a one amp and it instantly goes red. It doesn't mean you've got a misconfiguration or a short or something. Um, it may mean that, especially if you're doing something like a plane, there's that little voltage spike at the beginning. I don't know why it is. Perhaps there's um, better voltage regulation in like flight controllers and stuff, but that's what I found. Anyway, on with the test to set it to two amp, which seems much more appropriate for this sort of ESC thing. And I really wanted to test it because I thought if one amp is tripping out straight away, if we let two amps be the, the cutoff point, will, will that be enough to damage the components? So back to the edit and I'll show you. So there's one thing I wanted to try because I managed to knock some ESCs out fairly early and there seems to be a little spike sometimes when you connect stuff. So occasionally one amp plugging in will instantly turn off even though you've got no short circuit. So I thought let's try the same thing but use the two amp switch. So let's misconfigure it Let's put it onto two amps and let's see if that will switch off quick enough for things to still work or it's going to die basically. So let's get that blue LED on. Let's redo this screw again. Okay, so there's our horrible misconfiguration again. And let's plug this in and see if it's going to die or kill something. Red light fairly quickly. One more time, and red light straight away. So let's just reverse those wires again, just to make sure it's okay. Wires back to normal. Green light, and we've got the blue light to say we're still on two amps, and plugging in. Seems pretty good, and run the motor. Yeah, no problem. So I guess the thing you're wondering is what would happen if I didn't have this here? Well, let's reverse it. Let's take the motor and this off just in case and uh, we'll see what happens to that ESC. Okay, so here we are. We miswired once again with just the ESC on. So with our uh, smoke saver, let's plug, whoops. Let's plug in. And you can see light instantly goes red. So. Let's see what happens if we don't have that intact. And magic smoke, everybody. There you go. And it's called Smoke Stopper for a reason. That is now a very dead ESC. You can see the burn marks here. It's blown. Oh, the smell. It's blown those chips apart. Anybody that's done any sort of model engineering for a while will know this very, very distinctive smell. It's highly unpleasant and it's basically the smell of shame. You've done something very wrong and you've basically fried some of your components. So this ESC is now dead. Uh, fortunately, it was quite a rubbish one anyway. I didn't like it. Uh, but you really don't want to spend ages building something, make a silly mistake or have a short you didn't know about and then plug in and get that. So that would have saved me. 
I'm pretty impressed with this and there's been smoke stoppers in the past but they generally involve like a light bulb and making it yourself and I kind of lose interest when I'm putting a light bulb on things and I have to apologize to Vifly throughout the course of making that video I've called this thing everything but its actual name which is a short saver not a smoke stopper or a smoke saver or a short stopper short saver but it does do what I keep calling it. it it stops smoke coming out which is a good thing now I was trying to calculate exactly how many things I've blown up either accidentally or because there's been a problem that I wasn't aware of and it's at least three quads fully um, I've plugged in first time and something's gone pop sometimes it's been my fault sometimes it has been my fault I wish I had one of these to do it and I, so I'm a real convert to it unfortunately whenever I actually plug in for the first time I'm never filming because I'm just checking stuff out before I, I sort of go back and film it however if you want to see what this uh, actually looks like, uh, a few of my friends, Jack and Andrew Slash Frank from LDO, were filming themselves making a quad and managed to get the PDB miswired. And Jack was a professional quad builder for a while. He's probably built more quads than I, I can think of anybody else. So uh, anybody can get it wrong. This is what it looks like. Name of the truth. Wow. <laughs> Very on fire. Well, at least they took it in good humour, but that's like a whole day's work just blown out for them and a load of components just exploded aren't any good anymore. So that is... It, it doesn't leave you with a great feeling. You've, you've spent a long time making something really nice, making it good, and then you plug it in and the whole thing goes up in smoke. And, you know, sometimes I've, I've made huge cock-ups where I literally have soldered the uh, XT60 on backwards somehow and other times um, I've got unplugged so quickly and I've looked and I can't work out what the problem was and of course some of the stuff has already fried and you can't really tell which is really annoying so yeah one, one of these is going to be on my um, absolute must the first time I plug in a build now it's gonna it's gonna do this I quite like the fact it's got XT30 as well because of course lots of people are building sort of toothpicks uh, three inches that sort of thing and now you don't have to use adapters so that's really nice so the, the the tripping out very quickly on the one amp thing is interesting. Now the this thing and it's it's mentioned in the instructions um, trips out on a short circuit within three milliseconds and ten milliseconds over current. If you want to though, and this maybe could have helped me, there are these little tiny pads on the back. There's two sets of them. One says A and one says S. If you short the S pads. It, that will change it to five milliseconds short circuit and 15 milliseconds over current. And if you short the end pads, seven milliseconds for short circuit and 20 milliseconds for over current. Um, and if you've got bigger builds, you may need that. Um, for me, it seemed to trip out really quickly, even if I had it on two amps, but that was only on um, planes. And one thing I noticed is that most quads now have like an electrolytic capacitor um, within their and battery terminals and maybe that is the thing that's keeping that current limited quite nicely where the other ones are getting a spike so that might be the difference there anyway i like it i'm going to use it I, I think it's quite a handy and neat tool i am a convert hopefully i won't blow anything else up but you can never tell this is me we're talking about anyway this has been the short saver yes i'm saying that right from vifly and was kindly supplied for review by vifly and of course there'll be links down below for where you can check it out in more detail i hope the review's been helpful and i'll catch you next one bye for now well, you've made it to the end of the video, so thanks once again for watching. If you like what you saw, then please consider subscribing. And if you really like what you saw, then be sure to check out the link to my blog for a variety of ways in which you can help support this channel.